Welcome to the Spring Lecture Series at the School of Architecture at the Cooper Union. My name is Lorena Del Rio. I'm an assistant professor, and it is my pleasure and an honor to introduce tonight's speaker, Andreas Brunla. Andreas, together with his partner, Daniel Buchner, founded Buchner and Brundler in 1997 after studying at the University of Applied Science in Basel. Material plays a major role in their work, exploring in each project a range of options and opportunities that only a deep and careful understanding of materiality can produce. Each of their architectural visions that result in built form embraces an abstract starting point. Their projects distill an incredible sensibility and respect about context, yet bringing character and new identity to the site in which they operate, challenging type and exploring new tectonic relationships. Their buildings, exquisitely detailed, share a common language and material palette, yet are unique in their approach. Their extensive body of work demonstrates a transcalar method where small-scale projects serve as seeds for their conceptual thinking in search of new architectural forms. Thank you again, Andreas, for joining us today, for being flexible and embracing uh, new technologies and ways of communicating and welcome to the Cooper Union. Hello, everyone. It's an honor to be in this lecture series. Um, well, it is rather a special condition, I must say. It's kind of an experiment for me, too. So uh, first of all, many thanks to Cooper Union for inviting me. And special thanks to Roya del Rio Jimeno, Jimeno and to you, Mauricio Higuera, for the great support. The title of the lecture goes back to an exhibition we held in the House of Art in, Czech, in the Czech city of Budweis last year. The modest size of the exhibition rooms led to a specific exhibition concept. A pre precisely choreographed sequence of images challenged the perception of visitors and triggered a dialogue between different projects and buildings. The decontextualization enabled to focus on physical topics. It was interesting for us to see what was transported through images rather than plans, far from functional or programmatical tasks. Similarities in architectural themes could be traced, the relationship of form and space. In the following presentation, I use sub super titles for architectural themes to focus on similarities and the correlation of concepts. By using case studies, I illustrate how conceptual approaches are found and tested, how these mature in the course of further development and how architectural topics are established, therefore. Between the house and the city, it can be seen as a strategy of gradual spatial layering from the interior to the public space. Even ever since we started, we have been interested in uh, to react on density with the superimposition of reference spaces. In this sense, transparency of the facade allows a certain spatial participation. In our first residential project, we constructed in a densely built area an almost membrane-like facade to create an open structure like an architectural, archetypical shelter. In order to deal with primary requirements of the facade issues such as, such as privacy, protection, and identity became a separate subject. This issue was developed further in the house Ash. This residential building from 2003 is located in an environment of predetermined pre space and reacts to this with an ambivalence of openness and defense. The plot of land lies in a typical 1970s residential area. Um, the design of the single family house responds to this place of stagnation with an open building structure, a showcase case like glass house. The complexity of the facade giving it an fair ephemeral appearance, making it look like a pavilion, a folly, or a secondary structure, typical like a garden house, for instance. 
the outer metal envelope stratifies the space between street and house. The interspace creates a duality. The house is open and veiled at the same time. The created layer in between is not usable in the classical sense, yet it extends the spatial continuum of the interior. Well, this is perforated freely, piercing the seemingly random or natural cutouts. In this way, the various openings of the envelope they fragment the outer visible world into a number of image details. Metaphorically speaking, the question of perception of the world poses itself. Can we recognize this as a whole or only as an individual number of single parts creating a whole in us? Fundamental subjects relating to seeing and being seen are questioned. In the conventional housing hierarchy, the glass house stands for openness, transparency, but also for self-exposure. In the context of our project, this leads to a re-evaluation and leveling of the balance of power between the contemplator and the contemplator, between the people in the house and the people walking by, passing by in the street. We see the metal envelope as a metaphorical mask. A mask hides the true identity of the wearer, blinding the observer. The structural stratification of the facade creates an interspace that is open to interpretation and hence makes new levels of perception accessible. The Garden House project in Bern has a similar, similar strategy. It lies at the periphery of Bern, uh, the capital of Switzerland, and is extended by a circumferential spatial layer with a vegetative surface that intervenes the house with the surrounding landscape. The residential tower is part of a new housing development built on a field located at the edge of the amelioration belt of, of Bern. Houses, halls, housing developments, they built the arterial roads leading from the center of the city to the landscape. Relations to the landscape exist at the same time and in a very dense manner. The plot of land is located at the foot of the Gorton, the local hill. And besides that, the view into the nearby Alps is stunning. The project is based on a urban planning strategy that is con consciously oriented on collage and taking into account corresponding frictions arising from the free sampling of different residential typologies, which shape the task for the competition. You see high-rise building, courtyard house, a house in the tree grove, the atrium house, and the house in Rochas. Um, these five tasks were given uh, in the competition phase, and we were chosen for the high-rise building. Due to the lack of a relevant dialogue in the urban context, the plot was not necessarily predestined as a location for high-rise buildings. Therefore, superordinate relations were sought. The house is not intended for the city, but for the area, as we truth would have said. The given topping of the, of the project, living with a view, led to the design of an innovative housing tower that is also a reaction to the ambivalence of the task. An, afor an amorphous body which resists a clear typological classification. The tower has a polygonal footprint. Its shape twists and extends in the vertical development. Concrete slabs projecting on all sides create a stony intermediate spatial layer. In this plan, you see how the, the slabs differ in shape and size. So the house grows as further up you, you go. The slabs get bigger. Uh, Prefabricated Basins, which are embedded in the outer area of the concrete slabs, create a moving silhouette and make it possible to humus and plant every floor level. A metal mesh enclosure encloses the porous stone structure and bears a vertical garden that provides shade for the living spaces. Greenery, like wild vines, are planted to match the orientation of the building. The visual fields created by partial cutouts in the mesh are framed by large metal brackets. Together with the moving contour of the edges of the architecture, an, an, an architectural leitmotif is created. The discrete morphology makes the interspace appear as a microcosmos between private interior and the landscape. The relation to the enveloping garden 
creates a common identity that reinforces identification with the house and the location. As free, seen from the outside, the superimposition of bracket slabs and climbing plants generates an optical interplay between free pictorial quality and illusion similar to the classical perceptual illusion. The house within the house. The house within the house superimposes two identities in constructive honesty. The combination of spatial and typological systems can create atmospheric density and a high variety of spatial conditions. An original construction method and autonomous materialization is used to formulate a clear identity. The combination enhances the expressiveness and reinforces the architectural autonomy in a dense contextual situation. The residential house in Lurak, for instance, was rebuilt in 2012. The design of the single family house responds to the apparently fast moving new development area with an illusion in the sense of a trompe l'oeil. The, architect, the archetypical form of the house suggests timelessness and permanence. The first sketches could have been drawn by a, by a child. They show this in a simple manner. Um, well, this strategy at the same time, it camouflages the inner house, the second one, that is autonomous from and has a, uh, can be seen as the core of the building. The plot is located in a densely built area with single family houses that has emerged over the past 10 years. The design reacts to the banality and randomness of the surroundings with this original building concept. A simple concrete shell resting on the ground and only four points, while otherwise fully detached from it, spans a hall like space. Cutouts in the shell and large circular holes in the concrete roof permit adequate light to the inside and targeted sight lights, lines. The positioning, size and proportions of the openings in simple symbolic forms do not disclose the nature of the inner spatial organization. The inner house is built within the concrete casing as a wooden secondary structure and follows its own spatial logic. The specific outline of the secondary building structure creates interspaces between shell and core. They vary in character and in size. They can be used as places to sit or as a covered hall-like area and serve as a spatial extension of the house. The dark, monochromatic and precisely incorporated wooden construction fits snugly under the concrete shell and around the stone cone core and creates a strong contrast to the monochromatic outer shell. The concept of stratification is pursued further inside by double height spaces, wall height doors and internal windows. The conceptual approach creates spatial density and complexity that is continued through an unusual material conversion. The gap between ground and concrete shell reinforces the physical impact of the shell and house by suggesting that the wooden structure carries the heavy load of the concrete shell. Spazi per la didattica Academia di Architettura in Mendrisio. This is an extension project of the University of Mendrisio, the south of Switzerland. We extend the architectural department. In the Mendrisio project, a similar concept is used and adapted to the situation. A stony jacket is lowered into the ground that encloses a slim timber structure. The open campus of the Mendrisio School of Architecture is located outside the nucleus of the old city of Mendrisio. And it's, um, well, mainly solitary buildings of different historical periods that, that are the basic structure of, of, or the basic texture of the area. A leftover plot of land surrounded by three structures was determining the extension of the Academia di Architettura. Set between the freestanding buildings, the Chiesa dei Cappuccini, the Palazzo Turconi, and the contemporary Teatro from Mario Botta, the new extension of the Academia di Architettura continues the urban history of this area. The structural typology of the shed hall was selected to accommodate the new workspace for future architects.
This type supplements the significance of the existing buildings. The palazzo for the teaching in the back of the image, the church for the spirit, and the rotunda for culture, the new shade hall as workspace. Spatial density and the respect for the historical monuments in the immediate neighborhood led to a lowering of the volume into the inclined topography. This creates a primary spatial system in the form of an envelope and jacket structure with an open rectangular space allowing to introduce a repetitive classical wooden structure. The clear basic shape of the wall with the inserted lightweight construction contrasts with the free geometry of the enclosing spatial jacket, fitted with apse-like spatial pockets, continuing into the slope. The open continuum of the shed hall is illuminated sanitarily, with introvertedness permitting concentrated work. A relation to the outside is created through a tassio and a panorama window facing the, the valley. A didactic approach has been developed from a simple conceptual sketch with the more pronounced expression of two autonomous principles of construction leading to clear readability. Intimacy and size. The topic, intimacy and size, describes the relationship of the individual to the space of imaginary dimensions. Differences between spatial concepts are hardly illustrated more clearly than in the comparison of a private residential house with the office building. The residential building is generally composed of numerous usage parameters leading to a different spatial configuration. In opposite, an office building is mostly the result of speciality determined by optimized workspace economy and the high demand for flexibility. Even more interesting, when spatial concepts can be developed with, which permit a new establishment of human scale and combine this with spaces of ima imaginary dimensions. The residential house in Binningham is situation, situated in an enclosed plot of land in the topogra topography or in a depression of topography because of the previous excavation work. That means the plot of land has had owners that wanted to build their own house or a similar construction, and um, they left the plot. They sold the ha they sold the, 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 the property, and the new owners they had to deal with the artificial um, landscape that was created by the previous owners. So this led to a rather specific hermetic um, concept, very introverted. Uh, a prime feature of the house is the open atrium in the center of the main volume, around which usage areas are arranged. In the image, you see the outer contour of the, of the, of the wall of the volume with almost no significant hints to what is happening behind the wall. Um, only simple elements like uh, one window or the chimney or a slot would allow people to, to kind of build up a dialogue from inside to outside. The atrium in the middle penetrates the volume and, and shows uh, the two uh, main floors. So it's a connecting space. By planting small robinia trees, one is moving about in the, height of, in the height of the crowds of the trees on the main level of the house. The garden is spatially enclosed by a continuation of the circumferential wall and is an interior. In in table part of the complex. The main volume is extended by a pergola structure, which also defines the stepwise transition from outside, from outside to the inside. The central atrium is the key reference space that determines the sequence of other rooms. In terms of size and proportion, it can be interpreted as one of the fundamental spatial modules playing an integrative role in the whole typological system. Since it cannot be entered, its impact is one of calmness and serenity. A haptic relation to nature is replaced by a pictorial, pictorial poetic one. This specific spatial nesting is a response to the prevailing architectural density. Its open center develops contemporary 
contemplative qualities and hence turns the house into an intimate private space. The original esprit of the Credit Suisse building in comparison goes back to the 1930s. This, um, a new atrium becomes the main inner space to serve the generous uh, public area as well as being seen as a transmitter or mediator of the inner organization of the bank. The building is, is occupying a neurologic a corner position in the historical heart of Geneva. It is to be reorganized and um, to be rebuilt as the main center of the bank, Credit Suisse, in the French part of Switzerland. Built in the 1930s in the style of the Italian rationalismo, the house has kind of lost its esprit, its original um, uh, presence to a numerous uh, extensions and transitions over the years. Historical images of the original architecture served as, as a starting point of the design, which aimed to revive the original urban consciousness through restoring a controlled form and a physical materiality. Obscuring elements that interfered with the impact of the building the last decades were removed. This image shows the condition um, when we found the house, when we watched it, you see it and visited it the first time. And of course, um, uh, I'm talking about all these embracing elements made of metal and additional uh, subdivisions of windows, for instance. The resulting simplicity and clarity creates calmness and a restrained presence in a, in a heterogeneous environment. The external austerity is contrasted by the atrium inside, which allows a visual dialogue between the various usage areas. A cas cascade of polygonal shaped bump outs superimposes the minimalistic gravity of a white concrete structure. We have the model, and this is the um, photograph of the realized atrium. As I said, with the concrete, with the simple grid and the bump outs. Frameless blazing elements are incorporated within this um, white structure. The glass is sunblasted to create a translucent effect, connecting the glass level to form a space enclosing physical membrane. In combination with light, the visual effect transfigures size and shape, making the atrium an imaginary free space. The individual rooms serve as places for personal retreat. People can be seen moving about, contours appear, and enter into a visual dialogue. These are to each other when people sit there and look into the atrium, into the other side. They experience a sense of community created by looking into the open central space. Just like when people stand next to each other in a museum and look at the same picture, they don't know each other, and yet they enter into a form of communication at that moment. This creates a specific combination of aloofness and intimacy. The room can therefore be regarded as a symbol for a special kind of togetherness. Load-bearing core. Today's mixed-use constructions obscure the legibility of structural principles. Contrary to this, dealing with old existing buildings can reveal new possibilities in a quest for congruence of structure and space. The summer house in Lemesho is located in a remote area in the south of Switzerland in the valley of Malemacha. The population uh, practice the subs subsistence agriculture for generations. That means people lived from very uh, simple plots of lands and from vegetables they grow, grew there, um, as well as from the forest, because the forest provided a stock of chestnut trees, safeguarding provision for the basic needs of the family. A continuous trend of rural depopulation has had an impact of, on the place and its built structures. The old house, which we renovated or which we transformed into a summer house, 
successively uh, was threatening to collapse after standing deserted for over 50 years. This was no exception. Originally designed as a three-story residential building, ingress of water started to damage the wooden structure elements, such as roof beams and intermediate ceilings. So when we visited the house the first time, it appeared as an open hall because all the intermediate level were kind of um, uh, collapsing and fell in onto the ground. The enclosing wall, I mean, enclosing wall was layered, or uh, let's say a concrete core was was uh, poured against this existing or the the old stone wall, and creating a homogeneous inner space. Um, well, this was actually uh, also measured in order to secure the porous building fabric. The homo homogeneous concrete structure, it was layered in, um, it was poured in layer by layer on site. It is creating this one family or let's say one space building. Behind the original doors and windows of the old building, wall had slits that can be closed with internal old shutters open the new inner structure. So this, the plans show the, um, the house after the, um, the poured in concrete in uh, black, um, visualized in black. And you see about the proportion and the height and maybe the original uh, layering of the building uh, three, story, three stories high. The presence of the original natural stone walls in the new interior create an interplay between old and new. Um, the shutters, they span for, uh, on the full height, and so you, you still, uh, when they're open, you still um, see the existing building, the old building, and uh, the former uh, structure with the intermediate floor that was torn down or torn out. The presence of the stone wall in the new interior um, can also be seen from the various sites. The interior offers a place for elementary living requirements, a living space, sleeping, an alcove that is heated from the fireplace. Uh, the rectangular concrete chimney construction stores the thermal energy given off by the open fire, warming the sleeping space located above. The simple standard is reminiscent of the modesty and the directness of the former living situation. The collapse of the existing structure gave new spatial possibilities and was the starting situation for a homogeneous single room house. The bareness of the poured in concrete continues the history of the house in an authentic manner. A unity of space, structural form, natural enriches the existence. Uh, the last image shows the annex where the chestnuts were dried uh, in, in old periods. Uh, we transferred it into a bathroom uh, with a bathtub inserted into the concrete in, um, or being lowered into the ground. The Kunsthaus Basel Land, with the insertion of a homogeneous concrete body, the existing low grade structure could be kept and transformed. Um, uh, the Kunsthaus Basel-Land is the, the art house of the, the Art Society of the Canton Basel-Land. It's, it's to have new exhibition premises. An old storage building located at the development site Dreispitz is available for this purpose. Options include change, um, change use or even new construction. The existing uh, structure built in the 40s or 50s, uh, see it on the right hand side. Uh, it, was, it was serving as an intermediate storage space for merchandise and has actually a correspondingly rudimentary construction uh, being shown in this image. So the, especially the, the roof beams, they're so slim and so simple, um, they wouldn't even bear additional load for, um, for, for renovation work of, of, of the roof, for instance. Um, limited, uh, the basic structure consists of a built-in steel frame construction, while the truss beams roof, beam roof is covered with corrugated fiber cement sheets. A replacement of the building was therefore the obvious option. The decision to preserve the, the whole finally led to a more specific concept, uh, 
The structure built inside the open hall allowed central support and relief of the truss beams, while also providing additional bracing for earthquake. The design is characterized by the duality between the discrete original building and the dominant inner body. Here um, in the isometric drawing, you see the, the inner body, the black drawing, the black, black part that is inserted vertically into the hole and that perforates the existing roof in three positions. Its geometry, um, uh, it structures the hall and forms the shape of the exhibition rooms. This leads to a diversity of spatial conditions and the rhythmic alteration of rooms of varying heights, inviting you to take a concentrated look at the exhibition objects. Thanks to the legable form of the integrated structure, the primary shape of the storage building nevertheless remains recognizable. Like in this image, the white, or let's say the, the inserted body um, is put in white concrete and uh, various heights allow to see the existing or still to recognize the existing hall. Um, the internal body penetrates the roof in three positions, creating triangular towers for the introduction of zenithal light. In the collage-like context of the heterogeneously changing area, the unusual shapes based on the geometry of the roof structure are clearly identifiable symbols indicating the, space, the special use of the future exhibition hall. The combination of the two structural principles illustrate the development of the use of this trans transitory place. Let's say from a very simple storage building to an exhibition hall for art. Physicality. Two morphological approaches are compared under the title physicality. This strategy is comparable in the genesis of form, the house in the free topo topology, and the house in an urban context. One can see um, one can be seen as an add-on principle, the other is based on subtraction from a blank form. Um, the first one is a single family house or a villa located in the heart of Switzerland. A spectacular natural panorama presents itself from the plot of land. The main arm of the Lake Lucerne below runs parallel to the plot. The Alps extend majestically beyond. The steep incline of the Bürgerstock mountain located on the other side of the water cannot be built on. The landscape dominates absolutely here. The house embedded in a soft hill topography engages in a dialogue with the landscape. The superimposition of penet and penetration of ordinary arranged panels and beams create a rhythmic composition. Layered spatial zones open up successively from the inner dense density, seeking a connection to the surrounding. The basic volume is calculated on the basis of a simple addition of rectangular bodies placed in a staggered arrangement, leading to diverse room dimensions. Courtyard-like interspaces allow a further meandering of the, of the facade. The structure of the panels repeats the basic dynamics uh, of displacement and superimpositions at the com compacted scale. Spatial organization is based on multi-sided orientation, inspired by the spectacular view. In addition, sight lines are created. As intimate and introverted spaces, the courtyards areas offer an, an engaging contrast to the expressiveness of the nature. Here the house in a multi-exposure um, image that kind of uh, illustrates the vibrant, the vibrant expression or the vibrant appearance of the building. Um, the next project is a central block or uh, let's say a, a complex uh, um, in the heart of the city of Basel. Um, we've chosen a comparable approach of interaction, however, uh, on the basis of another spatial and functional condition. Um, 
uh, here in the Volta Center, the urban mixed use building is located on an urban development border characterized by the transition of closed block structures to the freely placed functional buildings of the former industrial grounds. The building is located close to the railway tracks, and you see in the far back uh, vertical structures from the industrial zone on the right hand side, uh, residential areas. The building is understood as a form changing body, solid and concise in its nature, and yet able to transform and adapt in order to meet the diverse urban needs. In its responsive character, the building enters into a situa situative dialogue with the city. The homogeneous monolithic facade envelope made of poured concrete nevertheless creates an autonomous and original overall experience, reminiscent of an erratic block. The plastic, plastic uh, form volume oscillates between hermetic design and soft shape. One of the two punch out courtyards uh, cuts through the outer envelope and opens to the street. The conically shaped shorter end makes the joint like expression and brings spatial movement to the Vogesenplatz and the St. Johann railway station, a hub of public life. The dynamics of the cantilevered building creates a gesture to overcome the, divide, uh, the subdividing effect of the bridge infrastructure close to the building. Viewed from the access road from the River Rhine, the volume makes a tower-like impression, characterized by roundness and extra height. Yeah, this is the area um, at the main plaza, and you see how the building changes its form uh, depending the site. Uh, at the curved street, we kind of um, have a more <laughs> folded facade with, uh, with a higher depth uh, due to um, cut out elements. The plasticity is enhanced by, a different, uh, by different gaps in the facade envelope made of stone. The solidity of the shell is emphasized by fitting the windows on the inner side of the walls. The arrangements of open lodges enhance the impression of depth to the west. Towards the plaza and the bridge, the facade requires a second layer of glazing to meet sound protection and, um, as, a, as an additional requirement. Flush with the facade is underlies the basic shape of the building. The inner courtyards, they cannot be entered for the for the for the residents. Um, they appear as as let's say as more poetic gardens and um, as wild wilderness or let's say wild vegetation. The urban space penetrates the volume in the depth of which introverted living spaces are contained. This these disclose the nature of the house, intimacy despite size. Despite or because of the physical size, the building generates identity and hence has an integrative impact. Here in, it stands in dialogue with the existing, with the environment, with the existing um, urban fabric, but still it has a different uh, proportion and size. Um, in its permanent component of the city, it extends the more, to, more more for the logical experience of the residents. So um, uh, this is the series of projects I wanted to introduce. Um, so thanks very much for, for attending and um, I'm open for discussion and questions. Thank you very much.